We're going to have the World Championship Finals. Can't wait to see who wins. And let's get into this double CAD modeling environment. Rich Penn in the chat. Obscure Toby notes even better. Thank you, Rich Penn. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Great to have you in here. And uh, what is this? What is this double CAD? Well, all I mean is that we're going to model it in both on shape and solid works. We're going to try and speed run both. Albert Dinlim says, would love to see this done in on shape. Could not finish with sheet metal tools. Had to convert to solid. Uh, let's see here. Ian E. I Ain Marjorie six seven three four says sheet metal is not something I have much experience in, but would appreciate a solve for this one. My part is far too heavy, and I couldn't get the detailed cutout on either side to work. Uh, Robert Clementi says had a hard time doing it in SolidWorks. An inventor, can anyone share their model with me? P.S. I am not shouting. Oh, oh wait, sorry, I read that one wrong. <laughs> P.S. I'm not shouting. Okay, had a hard time doing it in SolidWorks. An inventor, can anyone share their model with me? P.S. I'm not shouting. Okay. I should have read that PS first. And Jamie McDonald said, took me altogether too long, wound up shelling it from a solid rather than sheet metal. Well, guys, let's see if we can solve this thing. I'm not sure who's using on shape. I'm not sure who's using solid work. So you know what we try to do here at Too Tall Toby? We try to give you everything that you could possibly ask for. Let's see if we can speed model this in on shape and solid works in the next 20 minutes. So normally what I do in a model like this is I really talk through kind of my game plan. I'm not going to quite go that deep with it this time. Uh, I'm just going to jump into it and do the live solve. But I will say this. When you're looking at sheet metal, it's a really good habit to get into thinking about how you could create thin wall geometry and extrude it to create your first feature. So if I were to create two lines here, a line going down, then a line going forward, I could extrude that as a thin feature or as a sheet metal feature. I could extrude that as a sheet metal feature, and that's going to really set me up for success. So the question is, what does that dimension need to be? And I think that dimension needs to be the dimension to these two vertices. I think what I need to do is make my first sketch a line here, a line here, and then extrude it out to the depth of those two vertices, which is 80 millimeters. So this dimension here, 80 millimeters, that's going to be my first sheet metal feature. And if you can get in the habit of looking at a complex sheet metal design like this and figuring out which feature can be created and extruded out as your base flange, that's going to really set us up for success in sheet metal, uh, regardless of whether you use in solid work sheet metal or on shape sheet metal. So I'm going to take this and move this over to my second screen, and we're going to do a live solve here using on shape. So we're going to do a live solve here in on shape. Let's jump into it here in on shape. We're going to say create document. We're going to call this 24 uh, 08 08 13 SM pivot flange. Uh, this way it will be searchable. I am going to make this a public document so um, you can search for this, this whole setup when you're done. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into my workspace units and just make sure that I'm working in millimeters and make sure that I'm working in grams. And I am. And so now I'm going to go front plane. S key, begin a sketch, get normal two with the end key, S key. I'm going to create a line that comes down here at an angle of 50, and then I'm going to create a line that comes across here. And this distance that I'm going to come across is going to be 160. It's going to be uh, 160 plus 14. And where I'm getting that number from is this dimension here. So 160 plus 14. So I'm going from this vertex. See, it says all linear dimensions are to the virtual intersection point. All linear dimensions are to the virtual intersection point. So this dimension here, this 160 is from the virtual intersection point. And this dimension here, 14, is the radius that's sticking off from that center line. So I'm going to go 160 plus 14 to get the length of that first line. So 160 plus 14, 50 up in that direction. And then we're just going to take this uh, uh, the, the point that's intersecting there, we're going to drop it on there. Um, we're going to go to, you know what, guys? Uh, stand by for just a moment here. I'm going to see if I can get the. Let's get the let's get the keyboard going here, so you guys can see the the keyboard overlay. All right, so now we've got that that first sketch in there. We got to fully define that, so I'm going to press the S key, and then I'm going to go down here to this uh, angle dimension, and that's going to be an angle of 45. And then I'm going to go to my sheet metal tools and on shape. So your sheet metal tools and on shape are found up here. Here's a fly out menu for all your sheet metal tools. Sheet metal model, and this is going to be an extruded sheet metal model. So I'm going to pick this here and this here, and that's going to get extruded. The thickness of the sheet metal is four. The bend radius is six, and there's a button here you can use to 
reverse direction. So I can reverse direction there to have that uh, sheet metal go to the other side. And then the final dimension that I need to figure out is what is the depth of this extrusion? Well, that's gonna be my 80 over two that 80 dimension that we identified earlier um, as we were setting up this model. So that's gonna be my very first feature. Now for my second feature, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this flange off here. Now, I'm not an on-shape expert. I am an on-shape professional, but I'm not an on-shape expert, but I don't think you can pull this flange off and edit the sketch all in one command. So I'm probably gonna need to just bring this flange off straight, and then I'll have to add this additional geometry with a tab and maybe cut away this additional geometry on this side here with a cut extrude. So that's fine. We can do that it takes maybe uh, an extra step but it's not that big of a deal so i pick this edge here s key i've got my edge flange built into my s key menu and on shape to save some time very helpful and when you're creating flanges in 3d cad the main thing you have to recognize is that the flange can begin at different locations so you see how when I choose these different options here, the flange is pulling off of the solid ma material in different locations. Well, you gotta make sure that you get that right because we're trying to create it so that it's starting at that 80 millimeters and then bending out. So in on shape, that's called hold line. Now for the height of this flange, uh, similar to what I did with the, the length of that first line, I'm gonna identify this 75 millimeter dimension and the 16.5. So 75 plus 16.5 is gonna give me the, the max height of that flange. So we're gonna come over here. We're gonna say that we want that height to go to 75 plus 16.5. And there we go, that gives us that flange. Now we're gonna begin a new sketch on that flange face and we're gonna create the remaining geometry for this area of the of the model. So this is gonna be that 16.5 times two. Um, the, uh, the height of this is gonna be from this point here to that uh, orge or to that point there, it's gonna be at 75. Really, I should right mouse button on that dimension and say change this to a driven dimension because this and this should be tangent. So I'll press T to make that a tangent relationship. And then I just need to define the location in this direction. So the location in this direction is gonna be 65. There we go. And uh, then I can add some additional information here. I like to add, you know, additional additional information into my sketches in Onshape. I think Onshape does such a good job of letting you work with uh, multi-body, multi-contours. So really I could just sketch all this geometry down to here in that one sketch in on shape and then kind of tidy it up as I need to. So for example, this is going to be collinear. Uh, this is going to be tangent. And then this is going to be at an angle here of what is it? 27 degrees. So you can see how the sketch is really coming together. This length here to that flat spot is going to be 90. I could even incorporate the um, kind of tombstone shape here in this first sketch since that tombstone shape is related to that hole. It's, it's defined by that hole. So this tombstone shape here, it's got a radius of 10 and then it's got a distance dimension from that hole to the tombstone at 99. And it's got a height dimension here uh, to... Let's see here, 60. And so um, the final thing I need to do with this is just create that extra geometry that's kind of sticking up and over here. So there's a line that comes up, come back and touch the end point. There's a radius here of three, and then there's a vertical line that goes up and connects to this. And uh, that is gonna be tangent. So we'll make that tangent. Uh, this is gonna be collinear, collinear. Uh, this is going to be perpendicular. Not sure what the shortcut key is for perpendicular, so I'll just make that perpendicular like that. And then there's gonna be a linear dimension here from this point to this line. That linear dimension is gonna be 12 millimeters. And that's all I think I need for that. I'm not sure if this needs to be closed off or not. I'll just close it off anyway. Like I said, on shape is so flexible when it comes to this kind of stuff. So now I can exit that sketch. I can actually choose in this region, and then I can press the S key and add my uh, tab here. So on my sheet metal tools, I've got my Oh, actually, I didn't add in my my sheet metal, uh, all my sheet metal tools here in this profile. So we'll add that and that. And uh, there we go. Now we've added that tab, that area that's sticking up and over to the top there. And then I could just show that sketch and I can actually pick this region here and I can choose extrude cut. So features extrude. And the cool thing is that with extrude cut, it not only cuts the solid material, it actually cuts the flange as well. So in this case, I'm only actually um, in on shape. I'm only actually cutting this region here, but on shape knows at that point to also remove the flange. So it's kind of some of that intelligent sheet metal functionality built in there. So this could maybe go like up to vertex and I could just go up to this point here and that cuts that geometry away and uh then i could take this this region here 
and maybe this region here as well and s key extrude and that's going to be a through all so there we go and then i just need to extend this region down here on the original print that region had um you can see that that region sticks out a little more and then comes back in. And we can see that that's being called out as 90 millimeters. So I just need to extend that that back region there a little bit and align it to that little notch there. So maybe I pick this face here, begin a sketch, do a rectangle, something like so. And then I could take this edge of the rectangle and this edge here and make those coincident. And then I could add in my dimension that goes from here to here. That's gonna be my 90 over two. And then I can use that region, take that region there, and I can go in here and say, I wanna add a tab, sheet metal tab. And there we go, that fills out that region. And so now the final, uh, the second to last feature I need to create here is the cut extrude to remove this additional material. So that's gonna look something like this, come back and touch the end point here, come up and around, that's gonna have a radius of 14, I think, yep. And then um, that's just gonna come straight over like so we'll merge those points we'll say that this and this are tangent and we'll say that this has an angle of it's 45 over 2 and then we'll say that we're going to add a hole here and that hole is going to have a dimension of 14 and now we're going to extrude cut remove that material we'll just make that through all there we go and now we're ready to mirror this thing. Hopefully I got all the dimensions here. I feel like I'm running in the tournament here. So we're gonna mirror this thing. We're gonna mirror it about this face and we're gonna say that's gonna be an add and merge. And now if we look at our sheet metal environment here in Onshape, we can see that the flat pattern in the sheet metal environment looks very similar to the flat pattern from our print. So that's at least reassuring. We got basically the same geometry there. And so now we can go down here to uh, where it says part one, we can right mouse button, we can say assign material, and we're gonna assign the material from the TTT custom library, and that's gonna be the uh, plain carbon steel. And then we're gonna go here to our mass properties and click on this, and we're coming up with 821.5. That's not right, I missed something. 821.5 is not right. Uh, let's see here. Did I miss the tangency up here? This thing looks a little funky. See, that looks like almost like lumpy up there. Let's go back to that sketch, See if, see if that's what the issue is. This and this, nope, the tangent. Let's see here. I missed the dimension somewhere, guys. So what do we do? What do we do when we miss the dimension? Well, we may have to forego the SolidWorks Live Solve, which is okay, we can forego that. Let's see, so this is one seventy-four. yep, that's right. 50, 45 degrees, we just go one feature at a time. The flange direction is the right way. The sheet metal feature is four and six. That's the right way coming out to 40, that's right. This flange going up here, 91.5. Yep, that looks right. 75 plus 16.5, yep, that looks correct. Uh, we've got this new sketch that we were just looking at. 10 millimeters, radius of three, perpendicular, distance of 12 there. 14 for that hole, 17 for that hole. There we go. And let's try this again. And 817 grams. Let's go. I'm not sure if that's correct or not. Let's find out if that's correct. Is 817 grams correct? Yes, it is. 817 grams is correct. GG, GG to Toby. 817 grams is correct. That's what I would put in the chat. 817 grams, GG, Toby. Let's go. So that's a bit of a speed run. I know it's a little bit faster than what we normally do, but if you were struggling with that model in Onshape, I hope that you uh, appreciate that live solve. If you do, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, uh, let us know in the chat, become a member of the channel. And uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed that live solve. And now let's move on. I think we do have time. Let's move on and try to solve this thing using a different CAD system. We're gonna do this as a double CAD, a little compare and contrast here using SolidWorks. So all the same methodology as far as deciding on a game plan. Uh, this time I'm going to start.